So this is the Belvedere Hotel and this is one of the saddest scenes in the movie where the mountain kills Oberyn Martell or basically Cersei's boyfriend in real life, the Viper. <laughs> So what I learned is that once upon a time, you know, Yugoslavia was composed of several countries, Croatia being one of them. And then during the war, I believe it was in 1991, and this was bombed. And that's why you can see a lot of the graffiti here. It's actually an abandoned hotel. This was the number one luxurious hotel under Yugoslavia. Now, this was also used by the Croatian army. I'm not sure if it's Croatian, Yugoslavia, but the army as a line of defense because, you know, you are above the water. And so in a way, it kind of like became a fortress. And ever since then, it was unfortunately abandoned, but not during Game of Thrones. Now you see the balcony up there with the flowers, CGI. Where all the royals were sitting, that was real. And then all the, I don't know what you call those things, but like the, the nice fences, those were actually made of cartons. And everything was like spray painted. They couldn't really do, but I mean, it's such a transformation. Isn't it amazing? Huh. Belvedere Hotel and now we're making our way to that island in Game of Thrones it's Karth I used to th I used to think it was K-A-R-T-H but it's actually Q-U-A-R-T-H or I'm not sure but it's basically where Daenerys's dragons were kidnapped the eggs so that's Belvedere Hotel making our way to the cursed island of Lockbrook that they were open their wings but I guess it's not mating season or they don't feel attacked so we're here in the island of Longdom and the building behind me that is actually a it's a Franciscan well anyway it's a monastery for 600 years they were actually living here and then when Napoleon Bonaparte yeah the short guy <laughs> when he came here and he tried to conquer this island. So what he did was he wanted to relocate those monks into the old town. And of course this upset them. This is their home for like hundreds of years. So legend has it, that's why this place is called the Cursed Island of Lockroom. The monks at the dead of night, they started to walk around the island with candles that were lit upside down. They put a curse allegedly saying that whoever tried to conquer this island will be cursed, I guess, with death or with bad fortune. And so, what happened to Napoleon Bonaparte died. It's quite ironic to say that this place is cursed because it is a nature reserve and it is so beautiful. It's like a giant botanical garden. But you know, as they say, bad things for you or things that you shouldn't have are usually the ones that are pretty and nice to look at. That's why they're called tempting. Okay, so this jewelry right here used in the city of Karth. This may be an island, but in Game of Thrones, it was a city. Now, that's a place where Daenerys actually held, uh, asked help from the King of Spices, as she could give him ships, help her build an army, so she could be the ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. So this was that garden right here. Okay, so who knew that inside there would actually be like a gallery that's just dedicated to Game of Thrones. In fact, they're showing all these television screens to show them the scenes where certain shots were taken here. There's like a commentary and of course there is the Iron Throne that tourists can actually get to sit at and know what it's like to be a ruler of Seven Kingdoms even for just a photo. Okay, so the main highlight of the island of Lockdown, I mean, not necessarily for the tour because it's a bit of a hike up. If you see from afar, there is like a fortress at the very top of the hill. In Game of Thrones, this was also used, but CGI, it just made it a little bit taller. And that is supposedly the, the house of the undying. And the doorway to that 
is at the old town where I was standing like right in front of the fake door. Oh, here's the other thing that you need to know. This country is, what, 90% Catholic? So they can be quite religious. And so, of course, having to feel bad for the monks that were relocated to the old town, they can be quite superstitious because you'll never know. The curse might be true. So whenever there are tours that are given here, people who work at the restaurants, people who actually work in the island, all the boats, all the tourists, all of them have to be out of this nature reserve before sundown because you'll never know. And camping is also not allowed here for two reasons. Well, you can't sleep here overnight, like I said, they close early. And two, because it is a dry type of climate, you're not even allowed to smoke here because it can cause any fires or damage to the nature reserve. So now we're walking to our boat. Here's our captain. Hello. Hello, welcome on board again. Yes. There's a helipad inside our boat. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You're holding bamboo. Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm holding bamboo. Exactly. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now I'm actually walking to the door to the entrance to this villa. Now this is the scene in Game of Thrones where Cersei is actually standing beside Auburn Martell, who are now together in real life, by the way. So we went up the high, 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 high stairs. It was a bit of a hike, but for me, anything to see history and Game of Thrones, I will trek it. I will make the effort. This pathway looks familiar. Getting to that, I don't know what to call it, like a terrace? So this is a scene where Marjorie and Sansa are walking and basically Marjorie, you know who plays the game really well, is like befriending Sansa. And over there at the terrace, that is where Olena, the one who killed Joffrey, was sitting with Marjorie and asking Sansa, what is Joffrey like? And of course, being so polite and a liar, says he's very nice and kind. And then basically Olena says, don't give me bullshit. in Game of Thrones is the Garden of Betrayal. Now behind me is a scene where there was a table and Oberyn was sitting, Oberyn Martell, and I think he was like writing down notes and then the lamp on the side is actually a CGI. And then another scene that happened is where that lovely couple is seated right now, those two. So 
It's a scene where Sansa was talking to Loras. Now Loras is the brother of Marjorie. Do you remember him? He's the one who ended up being gay. And then he was the one who was who had that marking by the High Sparrow. And then he ended up dying in that explosion. And then last but not the least, the other scene right there where those people are. So Marjorie was actually walking with Brienne of Tark. Now Brienne is that woman who's, who protected Jamie, who wanted to protect Caitlin Stark, uh, Catelyn, Caitlin, Catelyn Stark. And basically they were walking and Brienne was actually telling her, you know, I'm going to avenge the death of your king. And then Marjorie says to her, no, your king now is Joffrey. So Marjorie, she always, she knew the game. She was spot on. Just so sad that she died in the end. So you see the table behind me, it's basically where Sansa was met with Dantes. Okay, so Dantes is the guy who gave the necklace, the necklace that have that had one of the, I guess, amulets or the charms, whatnot, that had the poison that killed Joffrey. So that happened right there. I made my way down. Oh, so beautiful. That was amazing. It was worth the hike up. A lot of stairs. So worth it. Now we're going back to the boat. Thank you. Wonderful. So that's our hotel and the cast of Game of Thrones for the latest season. They were not allowed to leave the hotel and it's so nice to know that we're staying in the same hotel so so that the paparazzi couldn't get shots of them they weren't allowed to leave and then for the cast they didn't get any local extras so that everything could be top secret Croatia. I've heard of Croatia maybe 2012. I went on a tour and I met, I met this girl from Croatia and she told me how beautiful it was. But I guess I really even wanted to come more because of Game of Thrones. <laughs> and I finally made it. So this is our hotel, Hotel Excelsior. It's a really fancy hotel. Very grateful to be here. <laughs> the inside right here is like the indoor pool. And right when you step out from the pool, what do you see? If I guess right, that is the set of King's Landing. This is so unreal. We're going to be having dinner, sunset, fronting the water, the old town. Seriously, I can't believe I'm here. So grateful. So for dinner, King's Landing in the back. Hey! <laughs> okay, so I actually got like a quinoa salad, just something refreshing. We've been having pasta and just heavier dishes a lot of this trip, but at least now trying to get back to healthy. And there's a gym here, so I'm quite excited for that. There's like a seafood platter here, and it's so nice to be back in Croatia where the seafood is super, super, super fresh. Let's eat. Come on. Oh, sorry guys, morning here. It's not every day, so that's a buffet right there. It's massive, but it's not every day that you come across a buffet that has maca powder, rice protein powder. There's another powder that's ashwagandha powder. Basically, there's like a gluten-free corner. Amazed. Overnight oats, just love it. One of the things that's hardest to do is when you're on vacation is to eat healthy. 
So whenever chance you get, like whether buffet breakfast or or any meal that you can, always try to incorporate even just one thing into your diet that you know will be good for you. So if you take a look at my bowl, so I have goji berries, I have hemp seeds, maca powder, sunflower seeds, walnuts, which is really really good, and then there's a uh, almonds. Um, What's batong pakwan in English? Um, pumpkin seeds. <laughs> pumpkin seeds. <laughs> Sorry. Prunes and the ashwanga powder and the maca powder. Okay, so getting a table here by the balcony for breakfast is one of like the hardest things to do. For obvious reasons, look at what's behind me. So earlier, I was seated inside showing you guys what I'm about to have for breakfast. And then I saw an opening. Boom! I just want to make sure and... and of days that we've been here at least I wanted to have breakfast here once right by King's Landing. <laughs> So this is like the piano bar. This is where you lounge. There's an indoor area, really chic contemporary furniture. And then of course, there's the outdoor area overlooking King's Landing. And uh, what makes this piano bar quite unique, or I guess special, is because they actually have a gallery of all the famous people who have stayed here in this hotel. Okay, trying to look at the people that I recognize. That's the guy who played Ramses in the Ten Commandments. Yul Brynner, him. And then there's Ted Kennedy, Queen Elizabeth II. We have Princess Margaret. We have Tyrion Lannister. And we have Elizabeth Taylor. And of course, where are you? Jamie Lannister. Love him. And we have... Da-da-da! Daenerys Targaryen. 